Hey Math One, coming at you with a new video, new section, 2.3. It's our it's our third section with solving equations. Um, so so we solved equations where it was basically one or two steps, right? Add, subtract, then multiply or divide. Yesterday or 2.2 involved grouping symbols. Then we had so we used the distributive property, commutative property, and substitution to break stuff down. So I still want you to be able to solve with grouping symbols, parentheses, continue to be able to do it with decimal and fraction coefficients, and then the new skill is, is say, hey, what if, there's a, what, the, what if there's a variable on both sides of the equation? Can we still solve the equation that way? So let's get started. We still have our properties of proof that we're going to use over here. And this is going to be the last section where I ask you to document the properties, okay? So first example, you're given 7a minus 15 is equal to 13a plus 13. Well, it would be very helpful if we could do exactly what we did from the previous section where we said, let's make it look like some number, I'll just call it, I don't know, let's make it look like 7x plus 2 is equal to 5, all right? We want it to look like this, variable plus or minus. A constant equals a constant. If we can make it look like that, then it should be pretty straightforward because we did that in section 2.1. So how could we make it look like one variable expression on the left? Well, what if we took the 13a and moved it to combine with the 7a? We can do that because the subtraction property of equality states you could subtract any two numbers or the same number from the right and the left, and the equal sign is still, still checks out. So positive 13a, if I subtract it from the left, subtract it from the right, I'm employing the subtraction property of equality. That gives me, on the right-hand side, 0 plus 13, which... I guess just leaves me with plus 13. On the left hand side, I get 7 minus 13. So if I looked at it from this perspective, they're opposites, so you subtract the two. And then the bigger number is negative, so I keep the negative for that. And then the minus 15 is still waiting around. Okay. Now it looks exactly like what we saw in section 2.1, which should lead us to this idea of I need to get this constant to the 13, so add 15 to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. I have negative 6a is equal to 13 plus 15, which is... 8 and a 2, 28. And then you divide by negative 6. Because that creates a positive 1a right here. So uh, 28 over negative 6, I'm gonna, I look at them both as being even, so I can cut them in half to simplify that fraction. So if I divide the top by 2 and divide the bottom by 2, I get 14 over negative 3. And on this assignment, I want you guys to actually convert that into a mixed number, okay? So you're asking yourself, how many times does 3 go into 14? 3, 6, 9, 12. 15 would be one too many, so it's 4. And then there's two leftovers. So I want to make sure I documented that I divided by negative 6 using the division property of equality. And I'm done with uh, the first example. 
What happens if there's grouping symbols on both sides? So if I got 5b minus 2 parentheses b plus 7 equals 7 minus 5 parentheses 4 minus 3b. All right? I made it kind of complicated so we could see all angles of this thing. Well, like always, you have to get rid of the parentheses first because the order of operations state multiplication happens before subtraction. So you're going to take negative 2 times b. That's negative 2b. Negative 2 times positive 7. That's negative 14. The 5b on the left just stays. The equal sign is still there. All right, now I got to multiply on the right hand side negative 5 times 4, which gives me negative 20. Take negative 5 times negative 3b, so the negative times a negative creates positive 15. B. And then the 7 just drops on down. That's the distributive property. All right, now here's where we have to be very, very, very careful. You are still going to look at this as I have to simplify the left hand side of the equation and simplify the right-hand side of the equation before I start doing anything where I'm moving variables to both sides, okay? So what I have to do is say, oh, 5b minus 2b. Got to simplify that on the left. So that's 3b minus 14. That equals... And then do the same thing on the right. 7 minus 20 are like terms that need to be combined right away. So the difference between 7 and 20, well, opposites subtract. So you would put the big number on top, subtract the little number. It'd be 13 negative because the bigger of the two is negative. Negative 13b plus 15b. That's basically like a substitution move. We should be moving this, the like terms side by side on the left and side by side on the right, but they were already where we needed them to be. So no commutative property necessary on that. All right, now it looks like our first example um, on this assignment, which, which was the idea of, I want to create one B term on the left. So I see a plus 15B. I'm going to subtract that 15B from both the right-hand side and the left-hand side. Subtraction property of equality. Yeah, so now... Uh, on the left hand, on the right hand side, I just got negative 13 plus 0. On the left hand side, I have 3 minus 15, which, again, it's going to be negative 12b. I won't show the work off to the side. I'll just count on you guys to figure that out. And then minus 14. And now it looks like something we saw in section 2.1. Add the 14 to both sides. Opposite sign here zeroes it out. That's the addition property of equality. Opposite signs subtract the two. The sign of the bigger one is positive, so it's going to be plus one. And then on the left hand side you got negative 12b.
All right, last move, divide by negative 12, get b by itself. Division property of equality creates a 1 in front of the b. And then as I said in a previous video, I said this in I think the 2.2 section, if you take positive 1 divided by negative 12, here's my scratch work off to the side, my thought bubble almost. A positive over a negative is a negative, and I can't do anything with 1 12th. It's not 12. It's just 1 12th. You simplify the fraction as you see it. All right. Let's check out the next one. All right, it's nothing but fractions. I know that's not our favorite thing to deal with, but I think I got an idea with it. Remember when I said find a common denominator right away when you see all these fractions together? Now, you would want to get rid of parentheses first if they existed, but I don't see any parentheses here, so I'm going to instantly say find a common denominator. So I got four different numbers. That can be kind of a daunting task. But here's a good strategy. What you do is you take your biggest one, a 6, and then just start thinking of multiples of 6. You don't have to th really think about multiples of 5, 3, or 4. Just run everybody through the multiples of 6. So 6 doesn't divide 4 or 5. So i got to move on to the next one. So 6 doesn't work. 12 divides 4 and 3, not 5. 18 doesn't divide 4 or 5. 24 doesn't divide 5. The next one would be 30. Divides 5, divides 3, doesn't divide 4. 36. Doesn't divide 5. 42. Doesn't divide 5. 48. Doesn't divide 5. 54. Doesn't divide 5. 60. Yes. 60 divides all of them. So I gave you kind of a, a, a more rigorous common denominator in this case. So 60 is the magic number. So what I want to do is, is I want to rewrite this as something over 60 minus something over 60, with a C attached to it, minus something over 60 minus something over 60. Okay. So this was kind of the step of, hey, I found common denominators. Woohoo. And I didn't use that as a property, so I guess you don't have to document it as a proof. You don't have to, you don't have to write that. But I think it's helpful for you just to recognize that's what I'm supposed to do. So here. What you ask yourself is, what do I take five times to get 60? You take five times 12 to get 60, okay? Which means you've got to take two times 12. That's how common denominators work. You've got to multiply both the top and bottom by that number. So 24 is going to be your numerator there. Over here, you take 3 times 20 to get 60, which means i got to take 5 times 20. All right, that's, by the way, that's negative 5, so you're going to get a negative 100, and then there's going to be a C attached to it. Over here, times 15 to get 60. So 
So multiply the top times 15. So it's 1 times 15, 15, uh, with a C attached to it. And I'm just going to erase this C and keep it in magenta. And then times 10 to get 60 over here, so times 10 up here to get 60. So it's a negative 10. Okay. Now this is the point at which you say, if I multiply both sides by the denominator, 60, it eliminates, the it eliminates the denominator. It ditches it right away. So you can say, by multiplying by 60, you use the multiplicative property of equality, multiplication property of equality, and then this cross cancels with everybody using the distributive property. So it leaves you with 24 minus 100c equals 15c minus 10. So, so that's kind of like, hey, I use the multiplication property of equality and the distributive property to get this statement to show up. And now it looks like the first problem on these notes. So I'm going to get the C's on the same side. So you know what? I think it's easier to add the 100C and move it to the right. So I'm going to do that, which you're allowed to do using the addition property of equality. So that's gone. 24 on the left, 115C on the right. Minus 10. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that example and rewrite it with the C on the left. One fifteen C minus 10 equals 24. That's the symmetric property. The symmetric property allows us to flip it around like that. All right. Now it looks like section 2.1. Add 10 to both sides. Addition property of equality. 115C is equal to 34. Divide by 115. Divide by 115. That's the division property of equality. You know, the only thing I can think of is maybe 115 divides 17. And it doesn't appear to do so. Nope. So that's our final answer. I'm not looking for the decimal, I'm just looking for the simplified fraction.